Hello guys, Oscar Hotel 8, Sierra Tango November here from Survival Tech Nord. Today we're taking a look at the Powerfilm F15-1200 Thin Film Flexible Solar Panel. I've used the Powerfilm F15-1200 since midway 2017. It was one of the first steps in implementing a MAM portable power strategy for field communications. There's definitely a few specific reasons why I chose the power film. But more than anything else, I wanted to create a marriage between my own lithium iron phosphate battery packs and rugged panels allowing me to reduce my overall gear weight while maximizing the operating time I had with my radio gear out in the field. So, join me as we take the Powerfilm F15-1200 out in the field and test it along with our 10 amp hour lithium iron phosphate battery pack. All right, let's get started. You are listening to the emergency broadcast systems. This station broadcasts emergency news and official information on the air for a signed narrative. If you're trying to operate more than a couple of hours out in the field with radios like the Elecraft KX2, the Yaesu FT817ND and others, you'll need to come up with some sort of portable power strategy to keep your rig powered up for longer periods of time. My portable power strategy included a thin film flexible solar panel, a lithium iron phosphate battery pack, and a pocket sized MPPT charge controller. But before we get going, let's take a moment to break down all of the components in my portable power system. Now first on the list is energy collection, and I do that with the Powerfilm F15-1200 Thin Film Flexible Solar Panel. For energy storage, I'm using lithium iron phosphate battery packs. Although energy density compared to lithium ion is lower, the maximum amount of charge cycles you get is incredibly high for this battery chemistry. For battery maintenance and battery charging, I'm using the Genison GV5 MPPT charge controller for lithium iron phosphate batteries. Finally, to distribute the power coming out of my charge controller and battery storage, I'm using a power pole distribution kit. I'll leave information about all of these components in the episode notes. Let's take a moment to talk about why I'm using Powerfilm solar panels as a part of my portable power strategy. First and foremost, I don't want to worry about individual components in my portable power kit. No matter what, each component in the kit simply has to work. It's got to work in sleet, in rain, in snow, in ice, and I have every expectation that it will work regardless of the environment I'm operating in. At the top of the list is being waterproof. If you've been around the channel for a while, you know that I started off with Goal Zero Panels, the Nomad series. Well, after falling into a river, I figured out the marketing wasn't actually true. Not willing to trust marketing any further, I decided to put the power film to the test by hosing it down and submersing it in salt water in the Baltic. It gets a pass from me. Next was the waterproof connectors. Well, the truth is, what's the point of having a solar panel that can operate in the rain if the cables can't get wet? These waterproof connectors get a pass from me and I'll tell you why. If you're operating out of a shelter, your solar panel is outside in whatever type of inclement weather you come up against. You use tent stakes to put your solar panel out in the field. You run your waterproof connectors and cables into your shelter and you're still able to operate and generate power. Sticking with the connectors for a moment, let's take a look at how the connectors are mounted to the rest of the fabric housing the solar panel. One of the fails I've seen with other panels I've owned is someone walking past getting tangled up into the solar panel cable and ripping the cable connections off of the panel itself. This isn't possible with a power film. 
Finally, the Powerfilm solar panel is lightweight, flexible, and redundant. Lightweight and flexible are no-brainers, but the redundancy may not be completely apparent. Powerfilm cells are set up in a series parallel configuration, so even if you puncture one or some of the cells, you're still going to get amps out of the solar panel. Alright guys, now it's time to take the power film out into the field. Firstly, when you look at the results I'm going to show you, you must do so with the understanding that I'm at 65 degrees north. With that said, I'll show you the worst results first. Sunset over the sea at 65 degrees north, we were able to get 0.35 amps out of the panel. So why do I sound so happy? Well, the 817 only takes about 0.38 amps to charge. Even though I'm at a current deficiency, I'm still extending the amount of operating time I have with my rig in the field. For this next example, I'm on the patio around midday or 09 UTC, and we're getting between 0.9 and 1 amp out of the panel. I might also add the panel is lying flat on the table and not even pointing directly at the sun. That's not to say there's some miracle going on here. Uh, we're simply trying to test and see what type of results we get in a variety of different environments. We're going to stay on the patio for a little while, but this time we're a few hours later when the sun is almost directly overhead. Again, without pointing directly at the sun, we're getting about 1.03 amps with a peak of 1.09 to 1.1. And I might also add, why am I telling you amps instead of volts like other YouTube channels are doing? Well, first of all, these panels are operating at around 15 volts. Since I already know that my 817 takes around 0.3 to 0.4 amps, Knowing how many amps my panel can generate gives me an accurate way of estimating the amount of runtime I can expect for a given circumstance. Out in the field with the power film solar panel, there isn't that many situations where I haven't been able to at least trickle charge my battery. First of all, let's take a look at the actual objectives of the solar panel. First and foremost, we want to keep our batteries charged up. Secondly, if we can't keep our batteries charged up, we at least want to be able to extend the runtime of our gear for as long as possible. When you have an energy abundance, for example, full sunlight in the middle of the day, of course you're charging your batteries up. In contrast, if we have an energy deficiency, the most we can hope for is trickle charging the batteries to increase the runtime of our gear out in the field. In the end, with good planning and experience, we're left with one of two results. We're either going to be able to extend our operating time out in the field, or we're going to be able to sustain our operating time out in the field. Now let's talk about getting the most out of your power film solar panel. Honestly speaking, to get the most out of your power film solar panels, there are a few accessories you may like to consider. Now it's important to notice that the power film solar panels come with this type of cable. Uh, one side is the waterproof connector and the other is kind of a cigarette lighter plug. Now normally I would have cut off the cigarette lighter plug but there are some interesting things we can do with it. So let's say you're trying to keep weight down to a minimum and you simply want to use your power phone panel to charge up your smartphone or your tablet. Well, the best way to do that would be by using a USB step-down converter. This one takes anything from 10 to 28 volts and drops it down to 5 volt USB. It weighs nothing and alleviates the need to carry a battery bank if you live in an area which normally has clear sunny skies. Naturally, you can also use this to charge up a USB battery bank, but you can also use it to charge up your external battery chargers. 
In fact, I keep this 18650 charger with me to charge up my headlamp. Another piece of kit I like to keep with my PowerFilm solar panel is a power pole distribution board. Now, to make use of that power pole distribution board, I have another little gadget which I made that I keep in my grab bag. That is a cigarette lighter plug to power pole adapter. I normally use this adapter to connect the power film solar panel to my charge controllers. I'll just connect it to the power pole distribution board to show you that it's actually working. And that's about all the things I have in my little power film go bag. Let's take a moment to talk about charge controllers. Charge controllers are the interface between your power film solar panel and your battery. They take whatever voltage your power film panel is giving it, converts that into something that makes your specific battery chemistry happy. A good charge controller is also going to protect your battery investment. Now it's also important to understand that charge controllers are not just buck converters or power supplies. A quality charge controller like this one from Genesun is actually going to maintain your battery so that you get the maximum life out of it. Think about it in this way. Your solar panel, your battery, your radio, your tablet or computer, they're all islands and the charge controller is the bridge connecting those islands together. Well, I hope I've been able to explain to you the benefits of the PowerFilm solar panel. I mean, I've already gone through the budget options, I've gone through the goal zero as an option, and a few others that you haven't seen on the channel. Ultimately, I need to live with not pulling the trigger on the PowerFilm solar panels in the beginning. It would have saved me a lot of time, a lot of money, and a lot of frustration if I just would have gone to it to begin with. Finally, in the short term, I plan on taking a second F15-1200. That should be more than enough for my MAM portable digital field communications. And that's about it. Look, before I forget, episode notes are in the description. For those of you who have contributed in PayPal and Patreon, you're absolutely awesome. Thank you very much. I appreciate it. For the rest of you, if you like what I'm doing, if you like the content that I'm creating, please give this video a thumbs up, leave a comment, and share this video with someone or someplace who might enjoy it. Rock and roll, guys. Thanks for watching. Ciao.